Hey guys, let's talk about the ridiculous price of Collector's Edition. You might not know what Collector's Edition was, but I actually have seen one of these in 1994. This set was released in December 1993 as a Christmas gift. The back of the card is very distinctive because it is gold and it has Collector's Edition right across the back and right below Magic the Gathering and above the five color circles. So the collector's edition was a Christmas gift pretty much where you could buy it for the retail price was $49.95. That's what it showed as a whole collection. So there's 302 cards from the limited edition beta printing and 61 basic lands. In total, you got 363 cards and even the basic lands are now worth a lot of money. So pretty crazy. As you can see, Power 9 is included. The dual lands are included. And they look like real magic cards in the front. There's no difference except in the back. So when people talk about rebacking a card or scamming that way, what they're talking about is they take the front of a collector's edition card, which is much less in price than let's say a actual beta recall. So this is $125. I don't know what beta recall goes for, probably over a thousand if I were to guess. And they would take any regular magic card, splice the back and glue them together. And I have heard that there are some people who are so excellent at this because again, you're taking a hundred dollar card and making a thousand dollar card there are people who can mimic Van Gogh paintings, right? So this level is kind of like an entry level scammer, entry level art scammer, I would say. Now you also had all 10 dual lands and this was such a good idea. It's such a good concept. There are three packs, uh, pack one, Time Twister, Armageddon, Aspect of Wolf, Wheel of Fortune, which is now worth a ton. Underground Sea was in pack one. So even if you just got one of these packs, you would have been okay. Pack two looks, oh, actually no, there's more than, there's six packs and each pack has about 66 cards. There's Demonic Tutor here as well. Litz, which has gone up, Zombie Master, <laughs> the Zin, Rock of Carrot Ridges, Lord of Atlantis is here, Force Field, of course. All the Moxes, I believe, Badlands, Contract from Below, one of my favorite cards, Raging River, Black, Bad Moon is here, obviously Black Lotus, Ancestral Recall, Tundra, Mox Emerald, Nightmare, Winter Orb. I don't know why they do, don't do this anymore. It was such a good concept, right? There was 5,000 of these. Uh, there was 5,000 printed for international release and 9,000 printed for US and Canada. There was, the di difference was US and Canada was called CE and international was international release or ICE. So in total, there are 14,000 sets. So back then that was a lot. That was a lot of this Christmas present and everyone could just buy four of these sets and you would have a play set of all relevant cards. I don't know what has happened since that time. Magic has, I mean, this was before Hasbro, right? This was when Wizard of the Coast was just pretty much one dude, one Garfield dude and his bunch of friends. And, uh, and then it became, it became about making money. Richard Garfield is very famous for saying that he doesn't want for any non-special card, any card that would see play in standard or type two, he will, he was surprised a card could be over $20. Uh, that was his statement on the issue that cards shouldn't be over $20 if you need to play with them. Now, if they're collector's items or pimp, yeah, I think that's a different story. But nowadays, it just seems so ridiculous when I look back when I was playing when I was little. Again, I've told this story so many times. Beta was my first pack. I opened a few unlimited, but I definitely opened a ton of revised and the local grocery store had like lots of revised. And then I quit for a little bit of time. I came back during uh, Alliance. Alliance was not the greatest set to come back in, but I accumulated Force of Wills and the black one, Contagent. And luckily for me, 
people were quitting a ton of quitting magic in droves at that time period and i got 60 force of wills for pennies on the dollar after the it rotated out of uh, type 2 which was the standard that's what we called standard back then and that was very lucky because it launched my collection it launched it gave me i could, will always be like net neutral i would never have to worry about spending money on magic cards because i always can trade force of wills into something but right? hey okay I need that new card. I'll trade you a Force of Will for a playset of that new hot Planeswalker. Terrible deal on my end, but I'll, I'll still do it because it's better than paying cash pretty much, right? So there are a ton of these out there. Uh, they're not, especially during that time period. Uh, I remember say, saying to myself, wow, that's a lot. Um, and for $50, you got your Black Lotus. Black Lotus at the time, I feel, was like, twenty dollars or something so this wasn't like the tremendous deal it is now even one berserk which is not even close to being the best card in the set is worth over twenty dollars right uh it's an interesting story of how magic the gathering has changed from players to speculators investors giant stores once upon a time it was just a bunch of people playing it at the kitchen table and no one knew what the cards were no one had internet, no one had smartphones, and people just, they played the cards they loved. That's so strange now when I repeat it to myself. Um, we didn't have sleeves. We, I mean, the biggest YouTuber right now, he reviews sleeves. That's what he's known for in buying news and stuff. We didn't have any of this. We had plastic bags, and if you did have sleeves, you were a loser. And if you did have them, they were penny sleeves, right? These oversized penny sleeves that really didn't do much to protect the cards anyway. I remember like food stains on tundras. I remember food stains on, you know, scruffle marks and the spaghetti sauce on underground seas because no one knew what they were worth. And more to the point, Black Lotus wasn't worth what it was back in the day. Uh, uh, back, it was like 20 bucks and 20 bucks people. I remember at Inquest Magazine making fun of how uh, people, Black Lotus was 20 bucks and they felt like it was highway uh, highway robbery is what they said. And they were saying, oh, it's so expensive for 300 now. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about in quest? Like, magazine, um, wow. Like, things have changed so much. Uh, I, I will be very honest with you. I have enjoyed Magic. And I think I lived through Magic's heyday where prices people did not trade based on price because they did not know what the price was people played cards that they really wanted to play and my favorite example of this i think i already said this but i go back to it now he's like a very famous medical doctor now and we haven't talked in some time but he went to the same undergrad that i went to law school and it's one of, it's a top school so we have talked about that school and the experiences at that school and I remember he had a black-white deck. It was four black knights, four white knights, four Sarah angels, four fallen angels, and then, like, mana. And that was it. It was 16 cards and then just mana. And no one actually made a 60-card deck because we didn't know. I mean, we didn't, we're in elementary school. We didn't know that you need 60 cards to make a deck. So it was like, okay, put whatever you want. And people who had bigger decks, we assume, just had more money and were better. But that turned out to be false. And he called the deck uh, Equality. Love and Equality was the name of that deck. Because no one played black-white. <laughs> no one played black-white, right? Uh, and that was uh, crazy. Oh, he had four. Everyone. Okay, so the thing that like you have to understand was no one knew the land were valuable. In Pokemon, the land, the energy is not valuable. Maybe a special edition energy, but the general energy is not valuable. So in Magic... No one had a concept that dual lands were, we all knew it was a little bit better, but we didn't know it was what they would become today. Uh, we felt like they would just continue to print better and better dual lands. At that point in time, we thought the creatures would, were the strongest they would ever be, not the lands, right? It, it turned out to be the exact opposite. It turned out Shivering Dragon, if you compare it to today, today's dragons, is terrible. Fungusaur. Fungusaur was the best creature. <laughs> If you don't know what Fungusaur is, stop this video and check it out because you'd be 
shocked what that was, but that was considered one of the best creatures, right? You would straight up trade a Fungusaur for a Black Lotus, or maybe a two Fungusaurs for Black Lotus, and that would be called ripping off the person who traded the two Fungusaurs. I miss those days. Um, they're never coming back. I know that Hasbro has to make money, and they have to reprint, and they have to print all this shit, and um, man... Man, I miss those days. And it's also because I was younger, right? I have better memories because magic meant a lot more to me back then than it does today. I'm, I'm sad to say that, but um, I, I love this game. Like I have loved this game for a long time. And every single set, like Ixlan, now we have dinosaurs and pirates and vehicles that can flip into lands and it, it looks less and less like the magic that I used to play. And everyone has sleeves and everyone has different sleeves. Everyone has play mats. Everyone has different binders. There's like a bazillion different deck boxes out there. But magic is about playing the game, right? Does a deck box mean that you're playing the game? I know people like to... I'm not going to get into this rant because people love their deck boxes, love their play mats, but there was a time we existed without those. It was a time we existed without knowing what the price of any card was. Anyway, bye guys.